Welcome back to another R session. Today we're going to talk about the tidyverse just uh, slightly and we're going to import our own CSV files. Maybe even throw a little plot in there. And that's the idea is to get you started with what we call the tidyverse. The tidyverse is a collection of packages. It's a collection of packages that Hadley Wickham, who is a prominent data scientist that uses R, he decided that his opinion matters and he's going to find a way to basically help you structure your code so that it kind of has a similar convention and everybody can read it the same way and you can work with the same packages using the same conventions. Anyways, there's an operator called the pipe operator. Imagine pipes on the street that flow water through them and you have water going through the streets, but you can pipe that water into a house, you can pipe it into a container, you can take that container and pipe it into a plant container. So they are all, they work with each other. You can pipe data from a big picture and you can pipe it into filters, things like that. We'll, we'll get into that in a second. Let me first start with, let's do a new project and we're gonna start from scratch. So if you're not up to speed, click on New Directory, New Project, and we're going to call this one Important Data. You can call it whatever you want. And that way we can start with a fresh set of everything. File, New File. Let's again do an R Notebook because R Notebooks are a good way to document. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything except for my metadata at the very top, which you're going to hear terms like YAML code and things like that. This is pretty much on par with like metadata, YAML, Y-A-M-L. You're going to hear some of these terms, so don't get too frightened by any of them yet. So we're going to import data, uh, CSV data. We'll just do it like that. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to call that my title. And remember, this is a notebook file, so as soon as I save it, so I'm going to do Command S, and we'll call this import data example one and click on save and as soon as I save it again on the bottom right you'll see import data example one dot HTML open that in the browser so this is the one reason why we like notebooks so much now you can't see it yet let me pull this over there we go so we have it we have our import data CSV title and we have our code which is nothing I just wanted to reiterate that that's what a notebook file does so close that out let's go back to R now let's create a introduction we'll just call this uh, double hash hashtag space and call it intro and we're gonna say learn how to use tidyverse to import CSV files for now we'll see how far we get this is gonna be a short tutorial Okay, let's go ahead and do another one and call this one Load Libraries. And in this, we're actually going to put some code. So remember the three back ticks, curly brace open, if I can get it, curly brace close, and three more back ticks to close out the code. Okay, so now we have a spot to put our code in. Um, what we're going to do, though, before we put our code in there is we're going to load libraries. We're going to type in library, and we're going to actually type in tidyverse. Now, you might not be able to do this. What you can do to check those, you can actually just run this chunk. Mine will actually run because I have it installed. If you do not have it installed, there are two ways, two methods to do this. Well, there's more than two, but we'll start with the two. Uh, we can actually put the installation in the actual code, which I don't recommend you do because for a couple of reasons. Let me tell you this. You don't, let's say you're at a work computer and you're not allowed to install certain libraries. If your code has install.packages in the code itself, if somebody might accidentally run code that they shouldn't. Now this really doesn't come up at your personal computer life, but at work there may be some restrictions and it's just not good practice to force the user to install things. If they don't have it installed, that was their choice. That being said, let's check it out install.packages, this is not like a hack or anything, and just type in, in quotes, tidyverse. And it'll default to the CRAN library, which um, you don't know much about yet, but on a Mac, let's hit Command-Enter. On a PC, hit Shift-Enter, I believe, or Control-Enter, I forget. 
and it's going to install. Now since mine's already installed, it's going to ask me if I want to update it and restart my computer. Let's just go ahead and hit yes. It's not going to even, it's going to do it all behind the scenes. Anyways, that's installing the package, which I already had installed. You, it should take about just a few seconds to install. Now you're installed. But again, once you install it, you really don't need to put this here. We could have put this in the console down here when we did it, and it would have done the same thing. Install dot packages, but we didn't have to do it either way. We're going to do a third way, which is the probably most preferred way for new people, is click on packages here, click on install, and then you'll see install from, it's going to say CRAN, and you just type in tidyverse, and it auto-populates. I would, for now, keep this limited to your library. When you start working with files at work or restrictions on where things can be installed, you might have to find a different library and set that as a default, but we're not going to get into that yet. Install dependencies. That's pretty important. That's on by default if you do install that packages. But, however, uh, the dependencies are, let's say, one package relied on other packages to work. So that package itself will use that install feature, and it'll install the packages that it works with. Pretty, pretty nice and handy to do. Now, if you're if you're restricted somehow where you can't do install.packages, you're going to be in a world of hurt because you might have to download each package as a tar.gz file, which you can click on here, and and you can actually download them and then install them manually. That but that doesn't install the dependencies. Hopefully you'll never have to do it that way, but um, if you do, message me and I'll, and I'll walk you through that. Now listen here. We're going to click on install one more time just to show you that it works. All it does is type in, as you see in the console down here, it literally just typed in the same thing we did. Install.packages, see if I can find it, and then tidyverse. Okay, there's other places to install, and that's uh, GitHub or other websites. But GitHub is very common, and CRAN is very common. And CRAN stands for, I don't spell it out, Comprehensive R Archive Network. So it's just the CRAN project right here. This is where all of the libraries come from. Well, that's the fact. But, but anyways, you're going to hear CRAN quite a bit. Okay, now that we have it installed, we have to load it. So loading it, remember, is library, and then you put in Tidyverse in there and you load it. Once you load it once, you really don't need to reload it every time you run your code. It's it's already loaded in memory, it's not going to make any changes, so you can just run that chunk once. That's why typically you would have a load libraries type section or a chunk, and you'd load all the libraries you're going to use. That being said, let's go ahead and on line 15, after the backticks, I'm going to hit enter, and you'll see my, my screen change beneath that, because it's no longer the output of that previous chunk. I can get that back by hitting the play button again, but instead I'm going to type in let's load CSV file, load CSV. And we're going to put some more code in here, back ticks, curly brace R, closed brace, and more back ticks. Now to load, to load the CSV file we have to rely on these packages. Packages are like pre-built classes or functions or objects. I didn't really get into too much detail, but packages allow you to do some higher level programming without any effort at all. Like, there might be a package out there that reads a CSV file. Well, it's in the tidyverse. But instead of you coding, like how to read the data and how to actually figure out how to read a CSV, does a header count, somebody already did all that work for us. We're just going to use their package. I think it's called the read R package, and it's part of the tidyverse. Again, the tidyverse contains a lot of other packages. That being said, what is a CSV file? Comma separated value. So it's a spreadsheet. That's all it is. So I'm going to show you one here. I have one up already. This one here is on a website, and I will post the link to that website somewhere. Um, however, you find it by, here's what I did. I typed in example CSV data, so I did not have this one in mind until just a few minutes ago. I clicked on CSV files people, and I clicked on homes. That's it. There's where the data is. Let's bring that into R and I'll show you how easy that is. So highlight the URL, command C or control C, whatever it is. And we're going to use a, a package called read underscore CSV. You're going to see read dot CSV as well, which is actually going to do the job for you. However, we're going to stick to the tidyverse way. Tidyverse is a, hey, we should do it this way because Hadley Wickham has a, uh, an opinion on it. And 
so, so a lot of people respect his opinion and use it. So let's go ahead and follow that for now until you can write your own packages and make your own decisions on that. It's kind of a joke, but CSV underscore, it's the underscore CSV, and let's just type in, in, in quotes, that URL, Control-V, Command-V, and what it's going to do, it's going to read it, sure, I'm going to run this chunk, but what's it going to do with it, because I just said read it, so it, put, it spits out some information to the console, but it's not that usable, so let's do something called piping, ah, piping, what's that, piping is when you basically pipe water from the outside street big pipes we pipe them into little pipes to go into all the houses we pipe it into our sinks our showers we can use this water in multiple ways because we can pipe it through more than one pipe or filters or we can select sh certain parts of that um, pipe and that's what we're doing we're going to do that with data so picture the data as like the big huge thing of water and the pipes are the little very um, specific parts that you want out of it i want to water my plant so I would water it through the big pipe to my house, out the sink, into a bucket, into the plant container. You piped it all the way through from the lake. Okay, now, so read underscore CSV, we're going to pipe that into a viewer. And the viewer, oh, let me show you what a pipe is. It's a parenthesis greater than parenthesis space. And we're going to put it into the view, which is capital V-I-E-W, which is a GUI interface for our studio that that basically views CSV files. Now that was a lot of work. I'll show you a shortcut in a, in a second. Let's hit the play button first. And as you can see, it looks just like a spreadsheet. Almost everybody has worked with spreadsheets in Excel. So it's a very similar looking spreadsheet, comma separated. The underlying text behind this, because this is a viewer, it's gonna change it to be aesthetically pleasing for my eye. The underlying text behind it though, there's an actual comma as we saw in the data. The actual ROS form, besides getting into uh, ones and zeros, is comma separated values. Okay, okay, cool, we've done that, but we didn't really do anything with it. Let's do something with it. Instead of piping it to view, which we don't really wanna view it every time we run this code, we wanna you know, do some stuff with it. Let's store that CSV file into RAM so we can really work with it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna call my data, and I'm gonna assign the output of read CSV, so whatever the output of this is, which is all of the data, it's gonna read it into my data. And it's read underscore CSV, so what we're gonna return is an actual tibble, or a data frame that's got enhanced capabilities, which in, in a nutshell, it's gonna return a spreadsheet for now. So you can see here my data, 50 observations, nine variables, I'm going to click on that, and it's got a, a header file, nice and clean. It's separated from the actual data. The data starts on row one. The header file is not actually the data. And we go down to 50 rows. While we're here, let me show you what happens if you do comma, and then if you hit comma, then you hit tab, you can see some of the options. I'm gonna say column names equals, and I'm gonna type in false. And then I'm gonna run this by hitting command enter or control enter. And I'm gonna view it again. Oh wait, before I view it, 51 observations and nine variables. The nine variables are the column names. Those are called variables or features. You're gonna see a feature list or variable list or columns. Those are the common words for that. But why did I go to 51? Because I said column names equals false. It does not think that cell, list, living rooms, are names of columns, they think that's actually data now, which is obviously incorrect, but I wanted to show you that so that if you ever run across it, that's the reason. By default, column names equals true. You can either make this blank or just explicitly say true, which um, I can defend explicit. See, it went down to 50 observations. So we're back to square one, which is a more clean, readable piece of data. Cool, my data's there. What are we gonna do with data? Well, let's do some simple, simple things with it. Let's figure out what the dimensions are. Yeah, we can see the dimensions are 50 observations of nine variables, but let's let's do that um, more uh, programmatically. Let's do DIM, which stands for dimensions, and we'll just type in my underscore data, and uh, let's run that, command enter, and you'll see below that, on the output line number one, you have 50 observations and nine variables. Cool. Well, let's talk about that now. Let's talk about that. I, I, wanna, I wanna write a story down here. So my story, I'm gonna talk about this data. I have no idea what this data is. I just pulled it randomly. So it turns out that there are, how many observations were there? So there's 50. 
50 observation 50 houses well if I type in 50 houses well what if it's 51 next time or 60 or 70 ah crap let's not do 50 houses that's stupid let's do back tick the letter R space dimension my data and then back tick again Ooh, almost there almost there now what I'm doing is I'm putting something called an inline piece of code and the inline now in order to get this my data has to be defined but this is essentially the same thing as this chunk from lines 19 through 23 well it's line 22 but it's within the non R portion of my my notebook let's run that and I'll show you what's wrong with it and so before that let's hit save and remember when you save a notebook file import data it automatically in your file over here creates this HTML file I'm gonna open that in the browser and we'll see my story down at the below and it's got the code here you can hide them cool I mean this is why you love notebooks my story it turns out there are 50 comma nine houses we don't want that we want 50 houses and this is purely made up data by the way so let's go back here and I want to show you how to subset so as you saw here when I run this chunk on line, lines uh, 20 through 22. When I run my, uh, dim my data, it shows 50 and 9. Well, we only want the 50 and not the 9. So let's subset this data. We're going to use brackets for that. So open and close bracket. So we want the first or the second element. We want the first element. So dim is always going to return two elements. So if I hit command enter now, it just shows 50. If I put the number 2 in there, and I do it, it's going to show 9. See how that works? So it's subset. I'm going to subset the data. And because this is a, a, a vector of sorts, it's, a, it's not a spreadsheet itself. It's actually just one row of data. So it's a what it's actually called is a, an atomic vector. OK, more on that later, though. But now I see how I can just pull the 50 out. Now, in my code, I don't want that. I want the whole thing. because when you're reading code you should know what this is right we're gonna use that a lot but over here in my story I wanna also subset the first one so there we go I put the brackets in there and remember these are back ticks back tick R space and then your actual line of code back tick this is really cool because your story can be dynamic this is another reason why these notebook files are awesome command s let's go back to the browser and see if it updated it turns out there are 50 houses Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now let's do one more thing. Let's put in another R chunk, but I'm so sick of typing all that out. Why don't we do Command Option I, and you'll see that it automatically put in the back ticks in the R, which is pretty nice. All we're gonna do for this plot is type in the word plot, and I'm gonna type in my data and see what kind of plot pops up. Probably an error. Ah. Woo, lots of plots. Because we didn't tell it what kind of plot, right? We didn't tell it which data elements to use, nothing. But I wanted to show you that how easy it is to get plots going with plot. For my next tutorial, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about ggplot and how to make really cool plots and really simple plots. So, hope this lesson was uh, good for you and I will see you in the next one.